Hello and welcome to the second uh, video in the mini-series on exponentials and logarithms. And in the first uh, video, you'll remember, we just looked at an example of bacterial growth to motivate the exponential. And that was an example where we had doubling. And so, if you recall, we found that the number of bacteria as a function of the number of doubling periods, which we in that particular case took to be 15 minutes, was equal to 2 to the power of n. And this is an exponential function where we're varying the number of doubling periods. And the thing that I stressed in the last tutorial was how astonishingly rapid this exponential growth is. And I think we showed that if you had a doubling period of 15 minutes, then starting with one bacterium after a day of growth, assuming of course there was sufficient nutrients, then you would have, um, I think it was 2 to the power of, well it would be 2 to the power of 96, I think it was roughly 10 to the 28 bacteria which would fill a volume of something like, um, you know, more than more than two cubic miles. So that was just an illustration of exponential growth. And I pointed out um, other applications such as forest fires and epidemics, such as we're suffering from now, um, uncontrolled nuclear reactions and so on. So quite an exciting function, the exponential the purpose of this tutorial is to now bring this back sort of into the mathematical fold, so to speak, because we're not used in high school math to talk about functions of an integer. We're more used to talking about functions of a real variable x, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So let's just um, sketch um, an exponential that we have here, and then we'll see how to easily um, sort of interpolate that to a function of x. So I need to have a very long y-axis given this function is so explosive. Okay, and let me take um, now n to be the thing that I vary on the x-axis, and I'll look at um, one doubling um, period, two doubling periods, three, four, five, six, and I suspect we won't have room for any more than that. And then on the y-axis, in terms of these doublings, uh, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Let me put that uh, really tiny there, like there. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So I'm just going to double. 2 to the power of 3. Uh, sorry, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So I'm just doubling these increments here. Um, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So doubling 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So doubling again. 2 to the power of 6 is um, 64. Doubling. I can just fit one more on, actually, I think. So double this again. Just very approximately, so it's going to be sort of up here somewhere, okay. And let's just plot these points now. So I've got 2 to the power of 0 is 1. I've got um, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 to the power of 4 is... 16. Okay, I'm just doing this approximately, of course. Um, then we have 32. That's 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 6 is 64. So doubling again, roughly speaking. Of course, very, very approximate. It's really just a sketch to give you a sense of this. And then finally, sort of way up here, I've got 128. If I just go across there, and at 7, 
just to kind of make it roughly correct there would be a point up here okay it's quite interesting and and almost fun i think depending on how how you define fun of course but to plot these by hand because you do get a sense of just how out of control this function is um, and that's just 2 to the power of 7 being 128 there let me connect these points just crudely so that you can sort of see what's going on so I've got um, it's a bit hard to sketch at this funny angle here but let me do my best here Okay, and then it goes right up almost, you know, it's on this scale, it seems like it almost has a vertical slope. Okay, so that green dashed line is the exponential function. And if we call this uh, the y-axis, what I've plotted here is y equals 2 to the power of n, where n is an integer, and I've just done it for 0 up to 7. Now what I'd like to do is now interpolate between these red points and essentially we're now moving away from this application of bacteria and we're really taking this real world application of 2 to the power of n and we're just saying we want to have a mathematical function which instead of being a function of n is a function of x where x is a real number that can vary um, between 0 and for, this, uh, for the sake of argument here, 7, but with any value. And what that's really saying is that I'm, I want to define this function essentially along this green dashed line and call that my function. So essentially this green dashed line then would be the function y equals 2 to the power of x. And so if you said, well, what if x is uh, 3 and a half, then I would say, well, 2 to the power of 3.5 is a number, it lies between 8 and 16, and um, for this exponential it is on this green line that I've drawn here. So that would be my exponential function. And the thing to say really is that when you're sketching exponential functions, um, if you have a different base, they will always have this general shape, this extraordinarily rapid growth. Um, and let me do that right now, actually. Let me plot for you um, an exponential function which is generalized. So remember before I spoke of this number here, 2, being the base of the exponential. In general, let's consider having a base um, given by a. And for the sake of argument, let's take a to be any value we wish, but let's just take it to be greater than 1 doesn't have to be greater than 1, but for our purposes it's convenient to take it greater than 1. And let me sketch the exponential function now for you. So I'm getting away from these kind of precise values of doubling and really just want to kind of give you a sense now of more general sketching of functions. And I also want to look at negative values of x. So we wish to plot the function y equals a to the power of x. We know for positive x it's going to have this general shape. Two things we can say right up front are that um, y evaluated at x equals 0 is just a to the power of 0, and that will be equal to 1. And also at x equals 1, I have y is a to the power of 1, and that is equal to a. And these really are compass points for you in the sort of land of exponentials that um, an exponential function a to the x will pass through the y-axis at the value 1 and depending on the value of the base that you choose um, when x is equal to 1 then y will have the value of that base a. So let me just take that value a to be somewhere around here, for example, and let me say that this is x equals 1. Then this exponential function a to the x will pass through these two points, 0, 1, and 1, comma a. And if I plot um, this function, this exponential, um, in a similar manner to what I did here, 
then it's going to be a very rapidly increasing function. Quite hard to sketch at this angle, but there we go, something like that. That would be the exponential function. Now let's think about this function as we go to negative values of x. Now it doesn't make sense to speak of negative values of n when we were looking at the bacteria because that would be sort of um, going before the time that there was one bacteria. But there's nothing to stop us thinking about that for this mathematical function. So for example, just for concreteness, if we imagine that a was equal to 2, what would this function have looked like if we had gone to negative values? So for example, what if x is negative 1? Okay, so had a been 2, then looking at negative 1, 2 to the power of negative 1, of course, is just a half. So when we're looking at negative values of x, it's um, essentially enabling us to use um, our knowledge of indices that a to a negative number is like 1 over a to a positive number. So here, for example, a to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over a to the power of 1, which is 1 over a. And so whatever this base is, I now have 1 over that as um, the value of the function here at negative 1. And similarly, for this function here, um, when x is 2, we know that this would be then a to the power of 2, which is a squared there. Okay. And similarly then, at x equals negative 2, my function would be equal to a to the negative 2. So when x is negative 2, I have a to the negative 2. And that is the same as 1 over a squared from our knowledge of indices. Okay, and so um, we would have 1 over this value. And so you can see that as rapidly as the function increases on the right-hand side for positive x, it vanishes on the left-hand side within, with the similar degree of rapidity. And so this function will decay extremely rapidly on this side of the y-axis. Okay, and this is then what your exponential function looks like for both positive and negative values of x. Now, because a is greater than 1, when we're raising this value a to positive uh, powers for x greater than 0, we have this explosive growth, and we would call this exponential growth. And I cited those examples to you of the, you know, the epidemic and the nuclear reactor out of control and so on. Forest fires, examples of exponential growth. But you're very likely to have heard of exponential decay. In particular, the, the, the classic example of that is radioactive decay, which is actually used for radiocarbon dating along with other things. But exponential decay is also quite common in the natural world. For example, the opposite of um, sort of epidemic is extinction, um, and extinction dynamics is often exponential. So what would exponential decay look like, and how, we can, how can we describe it mathematically? Well, let me motivate that by the following. Let me introduce um, just a name of a function excuse me, a name of a function here, f of x equals a to the x. So I'm just naming my function a to the x by f here. Then you'll remember from um, a few tutorials ago, we talked about transforming functions. And one thing that you can do with a um, uh, any function is to reflect it about the y-axis. And that's um, associated with thinking of f of minus x reflecting this function. Now in the case of an exponential, that's quite interesting if we do that. We find this then, just replacing x by minus x, we have a to the minus x. And actually this is what we think of as a decaying exponential is a base to the power of minus x, assuming again that the base is greater than 1. And 
Again, using the properties of indices, we actually have, of course, that a to the minus x is 1 over a to the x. So if I reflect this function about the y-axis, you see really it's very simple that this rapid decay of the exponential for negative x that we saw in the exponential function will be reflected over here and this will become what we can think of as, as exponential decay. So let me just plot this in a different color. I'll do this in black and I'll do it with crosses so we don't get confused. So here's now the points for the function a to the minus x. You see that it exponentially explodes for negative x but for positive x it um, is going to be something that decays very rapidly and that's what we call exponential decay. Okay, so if I just sketch this function there. And so on, okay. So this black function here then is the function a to the minus x and the green function here is the function a to the x. We were able to generate this function a to the minus x simply by remembering um, about transforming graphs and the fact that a to the minus x really is just the reflection of the exponential about the y-axis. Okay, and this is what we would call exponential decay. Very good. So I hope that's I hope that's been helpful there. Um, and just one last thing about that exponential decay. Um, similarly to the exponential growth, we have values that we can um, think of very clearly. So if y is this exponential decay function a to the minus x, then y evaluated at x equals zero will be a to the negative zero, which is one and y evaluated at x equals 1 will be a to the negative 1, which is 1 over a. And so similarly to, to here, you have these sort of compass points that will be very useful when you think about exponential decay. What we tend to do with exponential decay is actually, uh, particularly in applications where the x variable is time, we speak of the time it takes for the function to decay to half its value. We call that the half-life and I'll talk more about that um, in a later tutorial, but you can get the idea that that's going to be um, quite easy to, to at least see graphically where that value would be that decays to one half. It will certainly be less than x equals one. Right, good. I think I'll pause there for this tutorial. Um, let me just do a very quick recap. So we took the exponential growth that we essentially calculated by hand for doubling of bacteria, where n was the number of doubling periods. We plotted that, these red points, for these integer values of n, and then I interpolated between those points with a, a green dashed line, and then used that line to essentially define graphically what I mean by a function y is 2 to the power of x, where now x is a real number that lies on this number line. I generalized 2 to the power of x to a to the power of x, where we now just have a, a general base a that for the sake of argument I took greater than 1. And we had these two points that we could rely on because they're very simple to define, that um, the exponential function at x equals 0 is 1, the exponential function at x equals 1 is equal to the value of the base for y and we plotted um, this exponential function. And then I spoke about how we can then reflect this exponential function about the y-axis by thinking of essentially f of negative x. And this then becomes the um, canonical exponential decay function that we think about for x greater than zero. Okay. Um, and that exponential decay function decays 
in just the same way that the regular exponential function decays for negative values of x because of this reflection. Likewise, the exponential decay function for negative values of the argument actually increases exponentially for negative values, again, just by, by simple reflection. In, in science, we tend to think of the exponential function for positive values of x, and that's why it's perhaps simpler to see why we would call this function exponential growth and this function exponential decay. Um, a final point for a, a slightly nerdy point um, for the purists, which is to say, well, why do we have to take the base greater than 1? Uh, what if we take a base um, a less than 1? And there's absolutely no reason um, why you cannot do that. Um, it's just convenient to take a greater than 1. If we were to take a less than 1, let me try to illustrate to you how you can think of that function. So if I have a function y equals, um, in fact, let to avoid confusion, let me call the base b, uh, so a number b less than 1, and let's think of an exponential function y is b to the x. So the way that you might want to think about this is in the following. Um, b is less than 1, so I can write b as 1 divided by 1 over b. Okay, sounds a bit strange, but I can do that. So b is 1 over 1 over b. That's all to the power of x. Um, and this is equivalent to, uh, because I have 1 over something to the power of x, it's equivalent to 1 over b to the power of negative x. And 1 over b would be a number greater than 1. So if you define your exponential with a base less than 1, you're effectively talking about exponential decay with a base greater than 1. So there's nothing, there's no new concepts or no new mathematics talking about a base less than 1. It's a bit confusing because what you might think of as exponential growth is really exponential decay and vice versa. Therefore, my advice is not to worry about um, bases less than 1. You can define them if you wish, but it is at best confusing. It's certainly unnecessary, and we generically um, take bases greater than 1. And in fact, this leads on very nicely to the next tutorial, because what I'll be say, uh, speaking about in the next tutorial is something really remarkable and beautiful, um, a sort of a new window onto mathematics that you'll gain by looking at exponentials. And that is the extraordinary thing that, in fact, we, and also mathematics herself, or himself, depending on your fancy, actually prefers a very particular base. Not 2, not 10, not 3, a very particular base, um, which is often called the natural base of exponentials and logarithms. It's a number greater than 1, and I will speak about that in the next tutorial. Um, it's a beautiful topic and will lead to lots of interesting connections in other parts of mathematics. So with that, I'll say goodbye and see you next time.